Welcome to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School, where we explore all kinds of things, stories about quilting, tools, field trips, maybe some famous quilters stop by, and of course, a little bit of copyright thrown in just for fun. This is Elizabeth Townsend Gard. I'm a law professor at Tulane University Law School, and I just want to quit. So today we talk with Scott Fortunoff. He is the president of Jaftex. Jaftex, as you know, bought Free Spirit earlier this year, and we've chatted with him on and off. He also invited us to the warehouse this summer, so we got to experience the warehouse, which was awesome, and the offices of some of some couple of companies. And he's in the car on his way to the 10th anniversary of Missouri Star, which had a huge birthday bash. And he was kind enough to talk to us um, as he drove. Um, well, he wasn't driving, but um, so he was safe. Um, but he um, he's in the car, and we chat. Just a quick hello. So you're right now we're chatting with you, and you're headed to Missouri Star. Um, tell us what we, – we interviewed Jenny Doan, so we know a little bit about um, Missouri Star, which was fun. Um, and – I sort of, here's my new thesis, Scott. I think that something happened in the 2006, 2007, 2008 time that is our leaders all started just kind of randomly doing things like Jenny Doan and Tula Pink and um, Alex Anderson and all of the, uh, uh, the crafty Gemini, um, all of them start about this time when the internet is still kind of newish, you know, kind of 2.0 is happening. Um, and now here we are with the anniversary, and they just exploded into these amazing things. Um, but they all started that same time, which I think is really interesting, you know? I never really thought of it that way, but if you say so, I mean... Yeah, isn't that interesting? You, you could probably say that about every year, but okay, if you put that no, together, they all, together, I'll go, Yeah, I'll, they're I'll all around them. between 2005 and, two, like, 2007. Uh, Mary Fonz, she starts doing her her mom's show like they all all the people we think of so far that i've like are like are big deal people they're starting then like there you don't get like oh well i started in 2010 or i started in 2012 no it's like this little niche space where there's not a lot going on on the internet and then they all start to become kind of who they are ironically i think that I, ironically i think that's when i got into the business really them. See, weird, yeah. right? Wow. Isn't that interesting? Now, now, now that now the thesis is definitely correct. Oh, totally, <laughs> definitely. Well, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, I think that's so interesting. So, anyway, so you're off to. So, what's going to happen at this ten year anniversary, uh, ten year birthday party? You have- okay. So, um, the you know, having just bought Free Spirit, we decided that we would sponsor the event. I, I don't know if we're the official sponsor or, but we are one of the big sponsors for the event. And we're going to have a booth there uh, where we will be giving out fabric for people to make these little pillows yeah. uh, that we will do- donate to a local charity. Um, so we'll be at a booth and we'll be hanging out. I mean, I hope I'm not in the booth too much. I hope to kind of get a lay of the land and meet some of yeah. the people. Uh, I am planning a Facebook Live later today and then tomorrow. I'm doing a Facebook Live with Rob Appel of Man Sewing. Oh, cool. So I'm excited, awesome. I'm excited for that. And uh just get to see the, you know, what everyone's been talking about for so long. They, they never know. let me out of my cage to go <laughs> visit. So, um, yeah, the, well, I can't wait to is, see Yeah, what you think of the, it. The truth is, the truth is, Elizabeth, uh, believe it or not, I've been working for so long. Uh, and then my brother came in the business about four years ago. And for whatever reason, I never um, worked on getting Missouri Star as an account. So when my brother came in, he was like, I don't know why we're not selling them. And then he ended up making a connection and it's really his account. So, um, you know, he doesn't have many accounts, but this is one of his and it's a great account and, uh, yeah. we're proud to be working with them. So that's amazing. That's so, what, so what does it mean to be a sponsor of an event like this, like this big of, of an event? Um, just, you know, it's just important for people to know that, you know, we're there for them and, and yeah. vice versa, you know, they're good. To, you know, for us now, we have so many different brands that, you know, we really need as much support as we could get of all the brands. And, yeah. you know, if we could sponsor someone, something and show them that we care and, yeah. and um, are not just trying to sell them and yeah. it goes both ways. So it goes both ways. That, that's kind of 
how we view it. But um, really other cool. than money, I'm not really, yeah. I, you know, we have a nice booth. I'm right. sure our name is going to be event. around. Right, right, right. And you're doing the, the, uh, yeah. the pillow thing and all of that. That's really interesting. Well, exactly. and also, exactly. you're all over the place. So I, like, you're doing different um, challenges. You, and so you sound like my wife now. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's who I should be interviewing. Like, how is she surviving? Yeah. <laughs> your all of your activities. <laughs> it's, um, it's just it's just hard with you know we have two kids so it's yeah. hard for her to be running around but I totally she's hanging get it. in there. That's good. She knows it's a means to an end and uh, it's yeah. important. So well, and it's, it's you know, So I'm sorry. What was the question? I was going to say so. Um, how so? Tell us what your life is like now. When we first interviewed you. Um, we've been, I've interviewed you a bunch of times. Some of them we've, we were able to air. Some of them are more private, and some of them are the, the sound isn't as strong. So, um, so when we first talked to you, it was before you all bought Free Spirit, and we were talking about. And then all this stuff happened, and then we talked to you since then, and we went to visit you. But what's your life like now? And also, you've become like this social media thing. You're like a thing. So, how what is? Tell me about you now. Like, how do you feel about well, the social media I, stuff and your life well, at the moment? Well, for, for starters, I didn't realize how boring my life was before uh, this whole free spirit thing happened. Um, but, you know, I, it kind of like was a confluence of things that all just happened at the same time. Yeah. Um, I, be, before we bought free spirit, I actually had my Facebook page going. It really, right. you know, maybe I had 500, 1,000 followers. And then yeah. shortly thereafter, we bought free spirit and, that really uh, helped build the social media um, aspect of it. Um, but basically, you know, my social media page is going up because I started doing all these challenges and I'm really yeah. trying to uh, bridge the gap between consumers and the shop owners and, you know, get consumers to visit other shops and the shops that they visit, you know, their local shop. Right. And, um, you know, that definitely got a lot of attention, but the challenge, I'm sure you know about that. I'll just tell you here if you want to hear about it again. Yeah. Um, I, you know, so as, um, as I was traveling, I started doing uh, Facebook lives and a lot of the shops, you right. know, we would do a tour. I, I would have the shop owner tour me around yeah. and I would show everyone what the shop has to offer. And every time I would get home, I'd have like five more emails for people who wanted me to visit them. And I right. started thinking to myself, geez, geez, I could only travel so much. You know, right. I really do need to be in the office. So I put the onus on the shop owners to do their own video, which, you know, it served many purposes. First off, it's a great way to show the world what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, someone, you know, nowadays with the Internet, it's so much easier to buy things. So, you know, someone in Alaska could buy it from a shop in New York or, yeah. you know, what have you. So it was a great way also to get the shop owners out of their comfort zone. You know, I'm trying to get people to embrace social media and realize how powerful it really is. It is. Um, you know, our, our winning video uh, had over a thousand likes and 25,000 okay. views. And that was just on my page. So that That's doesn't amazing. include uh, right. views that they got and people sharing and yeah. all that. So, so it really is powerful. In a lot of cases, shop owners have told me, you know, they've gotten a lot of calls. People are ordering things online, you know, just, positive things and I want people to know that I do care and it's, yeah. I'm not just here to sell the fabric I'm trying to bridge the gap and you know really help get people into the stores it's so great um so you want me to tell you about my next challenge yeah tell us so so the perfect segue in the challenge for hel helping the shops you know do the videos um but let, let me just sorry let me just go back for one sec so the winner um of the of the challenge is yeah. getting a um I'm going to visit them and we're going to, um, I'm going to speak. They're going to have a bunch of events, a bunch of charitable events, and they're getting some free fabric too. So um, that's, really great. that's good. And how, would, um, how, was the, how did you choose the winner if people are curious? Um, the winner was all based on who got the most likes on my got page. Got it. So, so very um, easy for you. It wasn't quality. It was just popularity and, and social media uh, traffic so that it's easy. It was, it was just the metrics like, are easy. Yep, that's yep. great. So the old country, the old country store in Lancaster, in Intercourse, Pennsylvania, was was the winner. They had over a thousand likes. There was a shop, uh, Nimble Thimble, in Gilroy, California, huh. and they were right behind on the likes. Um, I would have loved to have gone to California to visit them, uh -huh. uh, but unfortunately, not 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 this time. Uh -huh. um, 
So that's where, oh, so, so that led into basically the next uh, contest, which was a contest for consumers. Yeah. And the idea here was giving the consumers three months to visit as many shops as possible and oh, take photographs great. and and have visual proof that they visited all these shops. Right. And the the person who visits the most or the f- four people who visit the most shops in this time frame uh, will have to show me all the pictures. I'll have to make sure they all are good. And then the winner will get a four hundred dollar credit to their favorite quilt shop. Oh, that's and great. Some free- fabric for me uh-huh, so, so basically I'm, I'm getting i'm trying great. to tie it all in i'm get i'm getting consumers to the shops i'm yeah. also going to give the winner a credit to their favorite shop so i'm also going to get them that's business great. Yeah. essentially and i'm um, just trying to do things like that the question is what is my next contest and i don't know what that is yet so i'm gonna probably take a break i can't just yeah. do contest after contest after right. contest but um, I figured this was the perfect segue it. and it was leading right into the Christmas holiday, which I know is a good time. Um, I did see on my Facebook page the other day, it's called, it's, it's the hashtag Scott sent me. Um, someone, <laughs> one of the shops, one of the people Love said it. they saw 10, sh- 10 shops already. So oh, that's wow. Great. Really? That's amazing. I, yeah. I'm really, what's your, what's your estimate? What do you think the number is going to be of how, how, what's the time period that they have to visit? It's, a, it's like almost three months. Oh, and, uh, my funny, goodness. Oddly, oddly enough, oddly enough, in my other contest, which um, there were only 71 shops that submitted videos, which I, I thought was kind of low considering, yeah. I don't know, there's probably two, three, four, five thousand shops. And, and right. I did make it international. Right. But in any case, I got 71. Uh, yeah. Beggars can't be choosers. A, and also it's um, the first time. I mean, every time, everything is a first time thing. Like people have to get yes, it, you true. know. So things that's grow. That's true. Well, uh, but on that wow. con- that co- that contest, I actually yeah. went out and posted on my Facebook page and asked people to guess uh, how many likes the winning shop would have. So no yeah. one got it on the nose. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I guess in in like ninety days. I mean, I would yeah. say 40, 30, 40 shops. It, I, it depends how hardcore you are. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It's I so want to do it. That's so funny. Like, uh, I'm totally like uh, I have a, a, a wickedly competitive spirit. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, okay, we can reorganize our life, and we will just like go to every shop we can. <laughs> so I mean, if you do a, if you do a shop hop, you know, you can yeah. hit eight or ten shops in a very short period. Totally. So it's true. you know, and, and I know true. some of those are going on. Yeah, so, uh, no, it's true. It's very true. Um, yes. Well, that's really cool. We'll have to figure out um, how to to play and and <laughs> try to do it. And I won't tell my family that I'm like obsessed with now going to as many shops as possible. Um, yeah. All right. So the other thing that I see is that you do a ton ton of interest. I'm curious how your charity work is going because. Um, it's getting more known. Like I was kind of amazed at when you, you put out, like, does anyone need um, uh, fabric for charity? Like we're getting rid of some, like how many responses you got. So I'm curious how that's going as you become more public. Um, well, that specific one is going well. I, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to have enough fabric for all the requests, but um, yeah. I have, I basically, I asked people to kind of partner with me and sending a check for the freight it kind of just yeah. makes them be be in it with me i'm not in the yeah. freight business yeah. i'm more than glad to give away the free fabric of yeah. you know things we're cleaning up in the office but i, I just uh you know we we can't spend hundreds of dollars lot. on freight for yeah. everyone that right. wants to so i mean not that it's not that we can't afford it or anything like it's just principle and i want people yeah. to be in it and and have some sort of skin in the game and yeah. not just say oh send it send it here send it there and you yeah. know no, I it. It before I know it, I'm sending fabric to Alaska and right, you know, right, all, all, right. Over the, all over the world. Right, um, no, I get it. I totally get it. But, but I'm always I'm always into the charity stuff. You know, the winner of the my video challenge contest, um, they have to have a charitable component to their event, That's and they're going to um, donate money or, or sell some quilts for. Um, in this case, it's a Mennonite organization. Um, I've I've been slacking on my sewing machine thing. Um, you know, I I did promise because it's now the the Jewish New Year uh, yeah, the right. last couple last couple of weeks. So right. I vowed to get get back into giving away the sewing machines, and I do have a lot of requests. It's just again between the traveling and the work, it's it's, a lot. it's hard to make time, and, and my family, it's hard to make time. But I have gotten some really sad requests lately, and <laughs> I, I'm definitely going to call some of these people and try to get them sewing machines and try to cheer them up a little bit. 
Oh my goodness. Well, um, and what I find is we've been doing these interviews now. We've done almost 200 interviews and the giving part of our of quilting is huge and and the charitable part and it's so moving and so amazing and um, I think the work that you're doing really sort of shows that that's part of your uh, on the consumer you know on the commercial side of it that that you get that that's part of what people do so um, it I think it really goes to the heart of your company um, and how you approach the world um, which is really great you know do you you know yeah. No, I I, you know. I agree. I think it's I think it's super important. Um, yeah. You know, I I consider myself lucky, and I want to give back and help other people who, yeah. you know, need help. And uh, you know, that's how I was brought up, and I will yeah. continue to instill that upon my children, and I totally. will continue to do lots of different charitable things as long as I'm in business. Yeah. And, uh, I I think it's a good thing. It, it's a feel good thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't need a pat, a pat on the back or anything like that. I. I hear the people, I yeah. get the pictures, I, I, I hear all the happiness, and yeah. it makes me feel good. So, so yeah, I'm all for it. All right. So in terms of the charity stuff, so you gave us a very nice donation um, when we came to visit you. One of our projects is going um, swimmingly, and that's our seventh ward project. So I'm going to send you information about it. Um, and they were featured in the newspaper. They decided what they wanted to do with the, the fabric. So they do a... They make sure that every single foster kid in New Orleans, they're in the seventh ward, so um, which is like the ninth ward, only next to the seventh. <laughs> it's just another space of um, it's a primarily African American community. And what they do at Christmas every year is they make sure every single kid in the foster system has a quilt that they get, and that includes the kids, especially that are um, are turning eighteen and making sure that they have a big quilt. Like they're not just baby quilts; they're like every size quilt. Um, and so they're taking the fabric and making sure that every kid um, has that. And so they have this huge project going with the, some of the fabric that you sent us. So that's they were um, completely floored and overwhelmed and amazed because they um, rely um, on donations for the fabric and themselves. They they donate themselves in, uh, as well. So huge, huge, huge. And we'll get you some pictures of that and and sort of what awesome. they do. That's great. So, yeah, they um, and last year they didn't have enough quilts for all the kids and that kind of broke their hearts so they're working really hard to make sure and it's just a maybe probably 30 30 30 30 to 35 women who are doing this so this is like a lot of work okay. that's the first thing then the other thing i want to talk to you about was market so market is coming up and festival at houston quilt market and festival and i'm curious like at what what are you all doing to get ready for it and is it kind of standard what you do every year because you go every year and you're a big presence there um we've got lots of different kinds of things going on what um or is it like a frenzy because we have a booth this year at fest festival and i have to tell you I'm kind of it's a lot of work i'm kind of amazed at how much like planning needs to go into this thing it, it is a lot of work it, it is an awful lot of work and um yeah our team is preparing uh this year we well when we bought free spirit they had some nicer booths and they had some extras so um, we thought with the purchase of Free Spirit that we would kind of increase our profile and have a little bit nicer booths. You know, to me, I, you know, I've been saying this forever that, you know, the numbers are down, you know, each quilt market and it's kind of unfortunate. And, you know, we've been trying to cut our costs and keep it down, but we thought we would give it a shot and try to step it up a little this time with a um, bigger profile, a bigger footprint and uh, just kind of go for it. But yes, it is a ton of work for everyone on my team. And, uh, you know, we have schoolhouses that we sponsor. Yeah, we have dinner, nice. we, we have a dinner, a dinner with our team. I, you oh, know, we have to cool. set up meetings. Right. We have to get all the color cards. We have to get the quilts that are going to be put up. It's, it's craziness. It's, uh, it's, right? It's madness, but it's yeah, madness. We, we do it pretty similar each time. Um, I'm excited this time. Uh, we, you know, we're going to get, we're going to have uh Kate will be there and Brendan. I'll, um, that is the first book market that they'll be there. So that's exciting. Um, we will have some things to announce also some people coming and some people going. And uh, I can't unfortunately tell you right here, but right. I will tell you when the time comes. Very cool. And uh, we're just going to plug away and try to sell as much fabric as possible and see all of our customers and hear what's going on and see what the buzz is all about. And uh, that's it. 
That's we, very don't cool. go to we don't we don't go to festival you don't go to festival you're you're now some of the people like does do some stay like does tulip pink stay for festival as well or as uh, so, some people do do stay yeah um a bunch of people stay. Just they do crossover, me. just not you. Yeah, yeah. we'll be yeah. there the whole time. We'll be there for market and for festival. So, um, and then Very we have nice. during festival. So, um, which our booth theme is just want to sit. That's our booth theme. <laughs> so uh, that, 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 that sounds like where I want to be. Um, <laughs> totally. we, we are not, I, I don't know if you follow Abby Glassenberg, but you know, yeah. like she's been writing a, a bunch about um, sample spree. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, Elizabeth, when I got into, you know, I used to really do the chain side of our business. And then when yeah. we bought Fabric Editions, I decided I wanted to take over Studio E and get into the quilt shop only business. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I told everyone on my team that we need to start going back to sample spree and be present and be around. But over the years, like we just end up coming home with a lot. It's just, you know, as one of my coworkers likes to say, the, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze for us. Yeah. You know, there's dr there's drayage. You're up late. It's you know, it's a, people. It's you know, some of the fabric disappears. Really? You know, it, That's crazy. The way we the the way we order our fabrics, we don't always have things early enough to send. So in some cases, we're sending existing lines or basic lines. So yeah. you know that that's that's part of the problem and. Um, I, I just don't know the viability of, of samples pre for our companies, but yeah. if other people could figure out how to make it work, you know, that's totally yeah. their prerogative, but I, I will not be there. Um, Interesting. And, and free spirit won't be there. Although free spirit has tried the pop-up shop, which is basically having, you know, almost having like a samples pre booth uh, on the floor at market. They yeah. have done that in the past. We were going to do it, but uh, you know, again, we're still, you know, scrambling with a lot of things. Yeah. On free spirit. You know, it's totally a beast, and uh, we have a lot to work through. And it just, it just wasn't that important. You know, we have yeah. to set our priorities right. Yeah, hugely. And, uh, and there's just so much. Only... Too thin. Yeah, hugely. I totally get. I get that. That's yeah. really interesting. And for those people who are listening that don't understand what you just said, what's it? Schoolhouse is a space where, like, shop owners. It's like every five to fifteen minutes you go or. Maybe ten minutes, like you go to different things no, and you learn about fifteen. Every the 15? fifteen minutes, fifteen and thirty minutes. Fifteen and thirty, um, got it. Basically, <laughs> it feels like five. Uh, <laughs> it feels like five because it's like frenzy. There's a frenzy to the schoolhouse. Oh, wait, but but wait, are we? We're mixing up two things. I'm sorry. Right. I yeah, think schoolhouse and then sample spree. Yeah, I was going to ask. Okay, I, that's what I wanted to explain. Have you explain what those two things okay, are? Fine. So let me do yeah. schoolhouse. So schoolhouse is basically um, for a, education for shop owners. And, you know, attendees, whether it's a licensed designer or someone from our own team, they could be talking about how to work with a new line, how to market in your store, how to attract new customers, how to get on Facebook, how to increase your social, whatever it is, yeah. it's educational. So they have a lot of those classes, um, which are great and helpful for the shop owners. And we sponsor many of those because, you know, again, we we are in this with the shop owners. It's not just right. them alone and us alone. Yeah. And um, on the other hand, sample spree is more like a like a market, uh, yes. almost like a where where right. the shop owner where where vendors like myself have booths and they sell lots of pre cuts. Um, yeah, it's and, like you know, it's like in the evening, and it's like you people pay to go to it, and then right. there's seven, like seven to nine. And it's kind of a madhouse as well. So people buying gobs of stuff and like, and then it dies down after like the first half hour or so. So it's like, um, it's weird. There's a kind of, it's weird as well. <laughs> I mean, it's good weird, but there's a whole thing to that. So some people really like it. Some people don't, um, but it's not free. They're buying, they're purchasing things at this the, right. um, sample spree. Right. It's just. And um, they were supposed yeah. to be at discounted prices, but I don't think they really are because everyone's got to pay to get it there. Yeah. You got to pay for the booth. You got to pay for people to be there. So, you know, it's not like you're getting any sick deal where it's like, oh my yeah. God, I got a steal. And yeah. I think the the big issue lately is a lot of people without the proper credentials are not really, or, or maybe with the proper credentials are not using their purchases how they were intended to be. They're, they weren't intended to be sold on Instagram like two minutes after at a, at a large markup. They were really meant to be for shop owners to make samples of lines coming out in the future. So 
they could have a model up in their shop and say, hey, you know, in right. uh, November, I have XYZ line coming and this is what it's going to look like. Well, That's people, what it used to be. Yeah. And people buy like, I mean, you do see people buying just like gobs of stuff. Like it clearly, it's like, um, like huge uh, huge amounts, huge piles of stuff. So it's, um, it's really uh, quite amazing and overwhelming um, as an observer. Um, yeah. All right. So that's cool. So market. Um, so as always, it was great chatting with Scott. He was on his way in the car uh, to Missouri Star. Um, he is awesome. He's so awesome and been so kind to our project. Um, so thanks again, Scott, for being willing to chat with us as you uh, went from airport to Missouri Star. And we'll hopefully chat with you again soon. So this is Elizabeth Townsend Guard. You've been listening to Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. We want to hear from you. Join our army, our quilting army. Go to our Facebook page. Suggest people.